Hey guys, Akil Stokes here, and welcome to this week's weekend review. Not going to have the camera on me this week as I'm still in the middle of uh, getting my new office set up, but wanted to give you guys some good content anyway, and of course, you're always going to get a lot out of these videos. Now, this week, as usually, I'm going to show you some flashbacks, kind of a recap of the week that was in the live room. And I'm also at the very end, I'm going to give you a trade. I'm going to give you a potential trade that you can take advantage of tomorrow uh, if you indeed decide to. Now, before I get into the live room sessions, I want to give you guys kind of a recap of what's been going on. If you watched last week's video, and if you didn't, make sure you go back and do that. We talked about how there's one month left in the trading, uh, trading year, which is December. And as far as the live room statistics go, we're almost break even or almost dead even I should say with where we where we were at last year last year we were able to return uh, 42 percent on investment this year we're sitting at 41 as I speak and well being a firm believer of the Kaizen philosophy continuous improvement I've made it a goal in the live room that hey I want to do better than last year so it's all gonna depend on how December goes last year I got hammered in December this year well, we're starting off pretty good. This this uh, this week, we took about six trades. And, well, actually, we took around probably 10 trades. We had a few break-even uh, ones during the day. But the six trades that completed, five were winners, one was a loser, and we're in triple-digit pips already. So we're starting off good. Now, we still have a, a long time to go, including tomorrow, and we don't know what's going to happen. But I'd rather start off good than start off bad. Um, so... Here's a look at what we actually looked at in live room, and then I'll be back in a little bit to talk to you about this potential trade setup. So we, we kicked off the first trading day of December with a very interesting day. It was a day of, uh, well, just near misses, I would say. We did have one winning trade here on Euro Dollar. We took a, uh, and even this was a, a near miss. We took a double top right here. It was a three drives pattern. If I zoom out some, you can see it right in there with the blue lines, a three drives pattern. We took it with a double top entry with RSI divergence, as you can see down here. Um, and I had my initial targets right above this 3 to about 35.69. You can see the market came all the way down to 35.70, retraced back up, and is now working its way back down. I actually just took my targets or my profits off. I closed down the trade because I'm, I'm having a guy come in to mess with the internet, and I have a rule that says if I'm not able to manage a trade, especially on a lower time frame, then I just don't want to be involved in it. So I was going to close out the trade, whether we were in profit or in tar uh, or in a, or in drawdown. But one near miss right there. We had another near miss on pound yen. We did some analysis on the higher time frames. Uh, essentially, long story short, we had an ABCD pattern at Fibonacci confluence at a structure level right here. We were looking at this on the five minute chart, waiting for a double bottom. Didn't get it on the five minute chart, decided, hey, let's check out the range bar chart and well, just missed our entry. Now, one of the things with pound yen is because I have a big spread on here, I didn't want to enter late and really screw up my risk reward. So was looking for another opportunity for the market to come down into the 68 even handle and well, just didn't get it. And you can see price action came back uh, to our target profit level, which is right here at structure and our 382. We also had a short entry. Well, we had a, a short opportunity right here, but again, because it was towards the end of the session, because uh, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to have any internet running, wasn't able to involve myself in this one. Lastly, we had something that we rarely get. In fact, we've only had it once this year in the live room. It was a butterfly pattern. A butterfly pattern here on Euro Yen. And I don't like butterfly patterns because of that D leg and how it completes in comparison to X and it doesn't really provide safety. But this one I did. We had a butterfly pattern that completed right down here on Euro Yen. If I zoom out my charts, you can see a beautiful cluster of structure down here. We have a false breakout here, but aside from that, structure, 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 beautiful. We had our order set at 39.09, and guess what? Price action came to 39.10, and then went up without us. So, <sighs> a day of near misses. One of those days where, in the past, I would have got very frustrated, angry, upset, would have yelled at my broker. Oh, the markets are out to tease me, and made up whatever excuses. But 
now, and as I told the traders in the live room, you just got to take the positives out of it. You take the positives that, look, I did my analysis. My analysis paid off. The market did what I expected it to do. I just missed out by a little bit and realized that this isn't the last time a butterfly pattern is going to form. This isn't the last time a three drives ABCD pattern is going to form. This isn't the last time, you know, a structure trade is going to form. It's going to happen over and over again in your trading career. So why get caught up over one trade? Use it as a confidence builder saying I was right in my analysis. And next time that opportunity comes, guess what? You have more confidence to take it. You're not thinking, oh, maybe I should short, maybe not. You're saying, you know what? I've done this before. Let me put the order on. And that's going to help you a lot with being consistent in your analysis. So it stinks profit-wise. But again, we're not trading to make profit. And if you're, if you're really trading correctly, you're not even worried about the money. It's process over outcome. You're not worried about the money you missed or whatever. You're worried about, did I analyze the market right? And in this case, you did. Unfortunately, you just missed out by, or we just missed out by a little bit. And look, it happens. Tough stuff. So that's how we started our week. Wednesday trading, man, what a busy day. And well, usually the middle of the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays are the busiest uh, trading days. Now today, well, I should say yes, yesterday was a day of near misses, as you guys saw in, in the, the last clip. Today was a, a day of target one winners. And well, we started off the room on fire. Uh, within the first 10 minutes, we identified about four cipher patterns. Uh, and well, let me just walk you through some of what we took in the live room. This one on pound yen or pound dollar actually came a little later, but it was a pound dollar cipher pattern. We had an X to A, A to B, B to C, C to D completion about right here. You can see it pushed up a little further. And as you can see, we rolled down and hit target one right at this three. Oops, if I get the right, right deal on, right at this 3D2. And then came back up to get stopped out for a break even on our second position before rolling over for a target twos or what would be target twos. One of our live room traders actually got lucky, forgot to roll his stops to break even. And uh, well, by the time he got back to his charts, noticed that well, the market was moving down. So he was able to bank a little more profit and get that target two hit. And that's luck for you. Sometimes it's on our side, sometimes it's not. Uh, same thing on Aussie dollar. We had a good setup on Aussie dollar. I'm not gonna show you guys that. Uh, let's go over to Euro. We actually missed the cipher pattern in the beginning of the day. It was a, a interesting one because it completed right at a, a high psychological number. And well, we missed the original completion. We had to front run our orders a little bit more than what we're used to. And news came out and the market completed without us. It actually put in a back to back cipher afterwards, which I don't think any trader uh, would have caught just because of the speed at which the market was moving. We did, however, catch a nice bat pattern down here. You can see in green, which rolled up, hitting target two. Our entry was bat pattern, so at 886. Our entry was about at 135.36, so right in this area right here. We rolled up to hit uh, hit target ones at our 3D2 at 135.58, so you know about 20, 20 or so pips in there on target one. And then again, stopped out for break even on our trail position. So only, you know, only one target getting hit here. Our, uh, our last pair was what? We had a Euro Yen cipher as well to start the day. And if I can find my Euro Yen chart, too many, too many charts up here. Here we go. We had a Euro Yen cipher to start the day as well, looking at X to A, A to B, B to C, C to D down here. And just like the other two trades, a spike up, 3D2 hit for target one, and then stopped out for break even. So, Three for three trading today. We had two trades that were stopped. We had one trade stopped out for break even. And well, and what I, what I told the traders at the end of the session was this, you know, yeah, we didn't get any target twos hit. We didn't get any real big winners. We didn't bank any, you know, 50 pips here or 60 pips there. But we went three for three with small targets. And if you add those little 10 pip targets, 20 pip targets, you know, you know, whatever, 15 pip targets up, they add up. You know, I don't know the exact count for today, but like I said, Euro dollar was about 20 pips. This Euro yen was probably about uh, another 15 for target one. I think pound dollar was smaller, five. You know, slowly but surely, you're looking at a 40 pip day, which, uh, you know, isn't too bad, especially when you're not taking any losses to uh, to take money out of that. Uh, so there's nothing wrong with getting target once hit. And, you know, that's why we move our stops to break even, 
So we protect ourselves on those second positions so we don't you know, end up giving money back to the market. Okay, so as you can see, a very, very busy week in the live room thus far, and not just the trading opportunities, but you guys got to remember, uh, I just recap what's going on. We do a lot of training. Uh, we look at a lot of setups, not only on the live room portfolio, but on higher time frames and uh, some of the exotic pairs as well. After all, we are doing live trading for three hours a day, so it's, uh, you know, even on the slow days, we're bouncing around looking at different advanced patterns, different questions about structure, double tops, double bottoms, market harmonics, Fibonacci, uh, you name it. Today we had a, a good discussion on uh, getting your Series 7 and what it's going to take to manage money and really grow your business as a, tra as a trader. Uh, so it's a... Uh, it's pretty cool. We get off topic a little bit with some fun conversation, but for the most part, we we stay uh, we stay trading related. Now, before I get to you, uh, before I get this opportunity to you, I want to bring up a great quote. I was listening, uh, actually, I was watching a video from one of our live room moderators, a, a different live room, uh, George Lambro. Some of you may be familiar with him. Uh, he's a live room moderator here at Trade Empowered, and he had a great video on. I think it was titled "The the Best Move of the Last 20 Years" or something like that. If you, if you check the Trade Empowered website and follow his stuff, you'll see it. I think it's on YouTube as well. His, uh, his channel is called The Trading Authority, I believe. Uh, but here's what the quote said. And this was referring to the stock market and a, a, basically a harmonic move that it's been making over the last uh, decade or so. He says, so the fundamentals are irrelevant. That's been proven out 100%. The onslaught of suspicions about where price should be based on a story completely without effect. So the one thing that you should take away from this is that the fundamentals are irrelevant to price. The next thing is that volume is irrelevant to price. All that matters to price is price in and of itself. That is the lesson of the decade and it's going to be lost on 90 plus percent of the traders every decade. But there's absolute proof to that effect right here. So as neat as it is to see targets hit, I am more excited about the fact that what happened on the way up with the media and the negativity relative to fundamentals was completely crushed by price. That is a beautiful thing and that's something you should take with you and move yourself towards just trading what you see. And for you guys, you know my opinion on fundamentals versus technicals and you, know, you can see why I love this so much. We actually had a very good example in the live room today where there's an ECB press conference and a, a few economic reports coming out uh, early in our in our trading session. We were looking at the dollar yen. There was a potential bat pattern on there that a trader had brought up. So we went and checked it out. The fundamental report came out immediately. A humongous bullish candle shot right up. I can't lie to you about this. It hit the 886, came right back down, guys came right back down and I told the traders in the room if this wasn't an example of how powerful technicals are then you should leave the room right now and and, and try another style um, and I'm a believer that you know fundamentals shouldn't be thrown out the window 100% but technicals are what rule the market the market respects these technical levels whether it be Fibonacci whether it be structure fundamentals simply push the market and price action there quicker. You know, so technicals and fundamentals, they control the destination. Fundamentals uh, or technicals and uh, harmonics and, and Fibonacci control uh, the destination. Fundamentals control the speed of the car, if you're imagining driving down a highway. And to piggyback that, I want to bring up an opportunity here on the euro dollar. I'm on the four hour chart and we actually have an advanced pattern setting up which we could see played out tomorrow. Now this is going to be a back pattern. We have our impulse leg right here, our X to A, our A to B retracement right here. We then retrace one more time inside that to give us a valid C leg. And then we're looking for a decompletion up at this 886, 3773. Now we all, talk, we all know tomorrow is the first Friday of the month. So that means what? Non-farm payrolls, unemployment claims, the big boy news, the fireworks show as I like to call it. So, and, and if you're not familiar with it, what basically happens is the market goes crazy. We see swings of 100 and so pips up, down, sometimes up and down. The market just goes crazy. And uh, especially on the day trading side of things, I choose not to involve myself in it. However, I don't have such rule for my swing trading. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have aggressive orders 
sitting right here on this 886 to sell this euro dollar. Now, of course, I'm going to have my stops above X because you always want to have protective stops in. If, if you're not trading with protective stops, especially during a non-farms uh, announcement, you're, you're an idiot. So you always want to have those protective stops in for worst case scenario. Um, you know how much exactly you're willing to lose. But I'm going to have aggressive entries in right here at the 886. And if this non-farm payroll announcement comes and pushes price action up, I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not going to sit back and say, oh, I don't want to go against the news. Uh, it's, it's a big momentum candle. I, I, I should just wait. No. I'm going to let the market come here. I'm going to trust my analysis. I'm going to trust my belief system on advanced patterns. And I'm going to short it right in the middle of all the mess. I don't care. You know why? Because when I did my back testing, when I ran through my charts for hours and hours and hours, do you think I, I, I cared about interest rate decisions or non-farm payrolls and stuff like that? No. My stats, my data are, are all based off of what I saw in the chart. What did price action do? And therefore, my trading uh, live is based off the exact same thing. So this is a potential setup for tomorrow. Again, we may see a push up there. Uh, the Asian session is about to start in about 10 minutes over here. So we, we may see a push up there during the Asian, Asian session, maybe the London session. But most likely the market's going to stall off and wait for this unemployment and non-farms to come out. And we could potentially see a spike up to this level. The question I have for you is if you're an advanced pattern trader, if you trade the bat pattern, are you going to have your orders there? I know I am. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, I try to give you good, uh, good content. I've been getting very good uh, feedback, so keep it coming. Keep sharing this thing. Keep liking it. Uh, keep encouraging others to, others to subscribe to this channel. That way you get updates uh, like Jason's new uh, pattern course coming out, which is going to be great, especially for those in the syndicate. Um, we've been dumping pattern after pattern after pattern in the syndicate this weekend. Well, for you guys that learn how to trade these things, you can just see the amount of opportunity that you're going to have throughout a week. So keep your head on the lookout for that if you haven't signed up already. But until next time, guys, plan your trade, trade your plan. I'll see you when I see you.